This is Chris McGrath of TDN, welcoming you to the next instalment of the Life's Work Project, partnering with Keeneland and the University of Kentucky's Nunn Center for Oral History. We're so lucky that some of the most accomplished figures in our industry have agreed to share some memories of their lives and careers, and the great horses and horsemen they've encountered. And we're very grateful today to be invited to the house of Mr. Gus Cook, formerly the long-serving manager of Claiborne Farm. The stallion roster was, you know, we had secretary, of course, was the hype name, you know, for, for non-horse people, but not, you know, but then we had Danzig, Mr. Prospect, and the Jinsky, Sir Ivor, Damascus, you know, I mean, the stallions we had in that barn were just unbelievable. So I was able to pay particular attention to them. I ran the breeding shed exclusively, only me, for 25 years. I, I was in the shed, I did it. Nijinsky was maybe my all-time favorite thoroughbred. When the queen came, we met, Seth and I met her at the yellow gate. She had a camera around her neck, just like all the tourists. And she turned to Seth and she said, are we gonna see Nijinsky? Because <laughs> that's the horse the Europeans wanted to see. Nijinsky was a good horse, and he was a good patient. Um, Danzig was just like his daddy. Look like him, act like him. What wasn't quite as fertile as his father, but, but very, very potent stallion. He was a hero. It gave something, people something to cling to and be excited about. And, that, that horse could load a camera. He was, he loved to have his picture taken, you know, and most photographed horse in history, I'm sure. And never did a thing wrong. Easy to breed, you know, easy to handle, easy to keep his weight on. It just, he was fine. Until he, until he got, got sick, he got uh, laminitis in his right front. Boy, that was, that was tough. That was a hard thing to go through because we were being watched. <laughs> You know, and he, and he started to get better and then he relapsed and we had said from day one, we're not going to let this horse suffer. And when he finally got to that point, we put him down. And then Dr. Kaufman and I went with him when we posted him. And I was there when Dr. Swerzyk took his heart out and he, he was there. Comment, oh yeah, commented on what a heart this is. He said, you know, biggest heart I've seen. Big, big heart. I guess that was his secret. I wrote a little story in a blood horse on Mr. Prospector when he died, and it was, you know, not just losing a big, uh, it was the end of an era, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, great, great horse. He would be in his paddock, and whenever a van would show up to, or the mayor, we'd have to get him in, because he'd get excited and start running. And, and there were times, actually, when people would bring Winnebago campers in, and he would see it and think it was a, a mare and start running in his pack. We had to move the Winnebago, you know? Swale was raised in the field in front of my house. Foghorn, they wanted to name him Foghorn. He was up in the training barn, and they'd be breaking your and he'd be in there snoring. And they were going to call him Foghorn, and Mrs. I don't, either Mrs. Hancock didn't like the name, or it was already taken, or something. But anyhow, they f couldn't find him one morning in the fog, and he was down in a low spot in the paddock, so they called him Swale. But that was pretty neat. He was raised right in front of my house, and I was on the finish line of the Derby when when he won the Derby. And then that's the day Olivia Newton John asked me for my phone number. I thought that was pretty special. <laughs> she didn't want to see me. She went to see Claiborne. So the next day, uh, Martha Lane Collins, who was our governor, brought Olivia Newton-John out, and I took him around Claiborne. So there's been some good, good people in the business that, that we've met. Mm -hmm.